I have my moments, but usually, yeah, I feel, you know, I do feel mainly positive, yeah. Um, well, I was born in Poland um, in 76. I was born with uh, without a kneecap um, and some m major bones and muscles um, lacking as well. And the whole leg was twisted around in a circle because they wanted for the femur, for the thigh bone to continue growing. What they've decided to do is wait until I'm a little bit older and then have it amputated when, when I'm old enough, basically. I feel that I had a wonderful childhood, I, you know, with my parents, my, with my family. I mean, we've done a lot of things. They've never really treated me as um, a child with a disability. I mean, there was obviously allowances, but they basically treated me like like I was fine. School was tricky. School was very tricky. There was, look, there was a lot of bullying. Um, I was actually able to run on my leg because I didn't have a knee joint. It, uh, the, the prosthesis that I had, it's got these metal bars on, um, like a railing really, um, from iron. And, um, and I could just, you know, move around on that. Well, because of the communist regime, we, we couldn't leave as a whole family. They just wouldn't let us go. So my parents decided to split the family. My older sister went with my dad on a holiday um, to Spain for three days. Um, and um, they were stuck there for two and a half years. We arrived here, I think, in September in 1990. Um, so they got me to school pretty much straight away. Well, my teacher from my school actually referred me to Royal Children's. She was just so appalled by what I was wearing. Um, you know, it had no food. Um, it was just terrible looking, really. I looked like a pirate. <laughs> what I've done the day before, because uh, I was already admitted to the hospital the day before the amputation, I had my little, um, I said my little goodbyes to my leg, yeah, um, just quietly and I was thinking about it and um, you know, it's, it might have been a useless part of my body because I was just really not doing anything and, and I knew that, but it was still part of me. I did spend a couple of months at the hospital. Um, mainly because I was just having so much physio then. I, I did experience a lot of phantom pain um, and it was excruciating, it was very very painful. You know when they amputate your leg you, your nerves are still catching up, your brain is still sending messages to the nerves so which are no longer there but it doesn't mean that the ones you have are not sending the messages through, not passing it through so it's, it's, a, it's a pain um, of a limb that's no longer there. Um, I mean, even now I can feel it, you know, I can feel the toes, you know, around here where it was amputated. So, um, yeah, wow. the ghost lives on. <laughs> yes. You know, I completed obviously year 12 and, and VCE um, in here. Um, then I did international trade, um, I think that was an associate diploma. Um, then I figured I actually want to do something that I'm passionate about, so I started studying massage. Um, you know, human body is just so complex in every possible way. Um, and, and I just find it fascinating, you know, and to be able to help someone by relieving the aches and pains or, or stresses of the day. Um, it makes me, it makes me happy, it makes me happy to help them. Um, but then I wanted more, yes, <laughs> and um, yes, yeah, psychology, st studying psychology right now, so. Okay, ooh, that's an interesting one. Are we talking romantically? Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, you know what? I think it was awkward initially. Um, as I was growing up, you know, the early 20s, etc., and 
Um, but not entirely. I mean, a lot of guys are actually okay with that. I think women in that situation are put in a particular, particular position where romantically speaking, they can't afford to go out with an idiot. They just can't, you know, because they, they need someone who is sensitive to their body issues um, and they need someone who is supportive of them. So I, th I suppose, looking from that point of view, it's like a natural selection. Yes, I'm missing a leg and you know what, that maybe gives me more um, allowance to be selfish and look after myself a bit more but also when it comes to selecting partners. I think for me it's, it's a sense of acceptance of my situation. Um, you know, a lot of people would um, sit back and think, you know, why me? Why was I dealt this? Why? Why God? Why? And I just don't feel that anything's stopping me. Um, and if anything, would would be to stop me that would be my own attitude it's certainly not the lack of leg like.